Well, a new factory that is expected to produce a billion doses of vaccines annually by 2025 has been launched in Cape Town. It is the initiative of American-based South African scientist and entrepreneur Patrick Soon Shuong. The three billion rand campus in Brackenfell will enable South Africa to produce the first batch, second-generation COVID-19 vaccines within a year and will be the first in Africa to produce end-to-end second-generation vaccines. To talk more about the factory and other COVID-19-related developments in the country, and are joined by the Health Minister, Dr. Joe Pachler. Minister, what a pleasure to have you. Thanks very, very much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you. I'm, I must say, yesterday was a was a was a great highlight. I mean, we'd first heard about this this uh, South African-born billionaire that wanted to invest in South Africa and get this hub to create vaccines. And this was a story that was doing the rounds. And when people were thinking, "Is it true? Isn't it true? Is this real? Isn't it real?" And yesterday, it happened. I mean, this is a big move for the continent and obviously for South Africa. Well, definitely, uh, we have been in talks with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Sun Xion, Patrick Sun Xion, for quite some time. Um, uh, Sometime uh, last year, uh, myself and uh, Dr. Blayton Zimande and uh, Minister Ibrahim Patel were invited by the office of the president to meet this gentleman with very, uh, very innovative ideas and willing to bring those to South Africa. But of course, unlike somebody, you know, who just be having ideas, where we realize that we're talking to somebody who's uh, already in the field because he's already got uh, some of this innovative uh, medical technology in the United States. So indeed, uh, yesterday, it was a, a very good day for us to witness the, the beginning of this Uh, in South Africa. Yeah. Minister, in terms of um, uh, the timing on all of this, obviously this was just the launch. We speak about the fact that he wants to ensure that we do get um, these doses, a billion doses by 2025. But obviously once this all gets started, when will we see the first batch of vaccines coming from that factory? Well, um, according to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Patrick uh, Sunchion, um this uh, uh, i think 2025 will be in terms of the full production but uh, many of this uh, as i'm saying he's already has uh, this advanced technology operative in the usa um so uh, this this uh, innovative uh, biological uh, products he has already put applications to our regulator in South Africa, the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority. Uh, These formul- formulations, uh, because you need to get the license. So he informed me that many of this, he has already put uh, applications. So um, I believe that it will be in stages because he did say that as early as even the end of this year, depending on approvals, he will be already, some of the machines and technology will start being installed uh, as early as this year. So I, I, I believe 2025 is the target for full production. So um, uh, some of the products as early as at the end of 2022, we mm-hmm. should start seeing them being available in South Africa. Which is, is, is absolutely phenomenal, and it goes a far way for, um, for the fight to try and get um, Africa up there when it comes to the vaccination numbers, which we'll, we'll talk to in a short while. But obviously having a facility of this magnitude, we're going to need the skills. And this is a, this is a big issue in terms of skills, job creation. How is that all going to work? Um, I know that there was talk about um, uh, Dr. Xuang offering some bursaries as well and to upskill South Africans. Talk to us about this and the, the employment that will come from this. Well, uh, and definitely there will be a lot of opportunities. Uh, but maybe just to add also to say that uh, we must also uh, say to the viewers that uh, this initiative is not only for vaccines which will help like uh, what we are doing now in terms of uh, reducing uh, uh, the risks of serious illness, but the technology which is looking at has the potential to actually kill the viral cells 
which means that when that is uh, approved and working, uh, it can actually stop the actual pro uh, uh, continuing uh, uh, spreading of, of the COVID. So that's, that's a, just, just a point to add. Now, on, in terms of the skills, that's why Dr. Uh, Sun Xion is working with the universities, uh, the University of uh, Stellenbosch, uh, Cape Town, uh, Witwatersrand, uh, and many other universities. I think in, in future, he hopes to work with uh, a, a lot more universities. Uh, but these this three, they are already, uh, he's already signed some agreements with them, but he's already uh, starting also the uh, 100 million worth of uh, scholarships. Uh, through which they will be able to recruit uh, young. Uh, some of them will be uh, graduates who will be doing their postgraduate studies, who will be able to do research at, at these institutes, but also they will be funding also aspirant um, medical doctors. So uh, with all this, it means that, I mean, as he said, there was a question to say, when this factory is actually working, how many people do you foresee? And he said between 400 and 600 uh, people will be employed. So, the, the, and many of these will be high level skills. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is really great as it is, you know, whether uh, sometimes people got a little bit angry with uh, South African scientists for the ones to be announcing the discovery of some variants. And that, you know, that in itself is, uh, is something that we saw happening at the end of last year with Omicron and, of course, with Beta. I mean, this is the standard of our scientists that are actually coming forward and discovering these variants. And the work that we do is absolutely incredible, no matter how angry people got about their holidays being cancelled. But the, 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 how progressive we are is something that really needs to be, it needs to be capitalised on. And I do say capitalised because we need to make sure that we are at the forefront of science when we really can be with the knowledge that we've already got here. Well, definitely. I think it's, it's, it's quite uh, unfortunate, uh, maybe understandable that uh, people were uh, upset with the fact that uh, with the announcement of the variant in, on the 25th of November last year, uh, you know, the, some of the world, you know, uh, nations reacted in a very negative way, uh, stopping uh, travelers from South Africa. But uh, as we said to them at the time that it was really ill-informed because uh, we need to share uh, this information as early as possible mm. so that not only uh, does it make it possible for us as South Africa to what we're dealing with, but also share the information with the world. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, because of that, many countries knew about uh, this variant. And, and of course, when it descended on their shores, uh, they were ready to to deal with it. So we indeed very grateful, and this will add more impetus to yeah. more opportunities for our scientists. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Uh, Oliveira, Tulio Oliveira, who is our leading scientist in genomics, is already working with uh, the, the, the Institute of uh, Dr. Sun Xion. Yeah, fantastic. I saw a photograph of, uh, of uh, uh, Dr. Tulio Olivella with, uh, with President Ramaphosa having a, a good conversation there. So I could, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall to hear what they were talking about. But that's, it, it's great in terms of that. Uh, Minister, let's get real in terms of the number of vaccinations on the continent now. It's well and good. We've got these, um, this, this perspective, amazing investment and opportunity coming onto the continent. And it, I mean, we, to put it out there, it's not just about COVID because this is TB, it's for... Uh, cancer vaccination. It's for a whole bunch of things that uh, will be manufactured there, hopefully coming forward. But I want to talk about the vaccine numbers here on the continent. I mean, 7% of the population vaccinated, many saying that, you know, as long as the continent remains at these levels, there will constantly be variants that are coming out. We need to vaccinate more. Why the hesitancy? What, what do you think is going on? So that, that would be my first question to you in terms of the continent. And secondly, let's focus on South Africa in your answer as well. Are you satisfied with the numbers we are at now? I mean, there's word about that we, we're nowhere near where we should be in terms of vaccinations as a country. Well, starting with the continent, um, I think uh, continent-wide, uh, I wouldn't really ascribe it uh, specifically to vaccine hesitancy. I believe that uh, the, the major factor in, major, in many countries in the African continent, the issue of access is still a matter, is still an issue, because of the fact that uh, 
um, many countries could not access uh, the vaccines through an initiative by uh, President Ramaphosa when he was a, a EU chair, uh, and also uh, um, early last year when he stepped down from being the chair, the African Union asked him to continue to champion the fight against COVID. So he had already initiated a, a vaccine, African Vaccine Acquisition Task Team, uh, which is leading the process of making sure vaccines are available in the continent. They've already signed contracts, for instance, uh, uh, here in South Africa with, uh, with Aspen, uh, uh, with the J&J uh, in, in South Africa produced by Aspen. But they've signed other supply uh, uh, contracts with other uh, manufacturers of, of vaccines. So, and, and also funding uh, formula, uh, there's a funding support uh, through the World Bank, which is also uh, assisting in that, and also African uh, Merchant Bank. So the, 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 this is the, the reason in many countries is, is still access. Um, so this is improving, but still a far cry. Uh, I think currently through that facility, they've acquired uh, or they've signed contracts for, for just over uh, uh, 500 million doses of vaccines. So, uh, but this is still uh, a, a far cry from what the continent needs. Yeah. But contrary, I mean, uh, as, as compared to South Africa, where again, with, with a, a very good support from our president here to push a number of manufacturers to really make sure that the, these vaccines are available to South Africa, but also to the continent. We were able, you know, granted that we struggled in the beginning, uh, but ultimately from around May, June last year, uh, the supplies started coming, you know, in, in, in a very, uh, very, in a very uh, speedy way. So we do have the supplies for Johnson & Johnson and also the Pfizer. Um, but the problem, of course, in South Africa, at the current moment, we have the supply, we have the capacity in terms of uh, vaccination sites, vaccinators. What we are lacking after a very good uptake initially, uh, this went down quite dramatically. And currently we are really battling to attract people to come forward to take the doses. We're, si we're sitting now at uh, about uh, just over 45 percent of adults, at least with a minimum of one dose, and just over 40 percent of adults with a full vaccination. But we do have the vaccines and we do have capacity. Yeah. Minister, the worry of expiring vaccinations, where, where are we there? Because we know at one point it was actually like, stop bringing in vaccines. We've got too many because we haven't got enough arms to put them in. There isn't the demand. Where are we with the expiration date on these vaccines we already have? The first batches which uh, we are pushing uh, and because of the, the expiry date are the Pfizer uh, vaccines, uh, uh, which, which will expire. I don't have the actual date, but it's somewhere in March this year. Mm. That's the first doses which we are worried about. But uh, as uh, on a daily basis, even though it's not at the pace we, we wish for, but we you know we do have an uptake of about uh, 90,000, 85,000, 100,000, of which we'd have, we'd have actually been happy with uh, over 200,000 uh, doses uh, being uh, administered uh, per day. So uh, fortunately, with the, with the Johnson or the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, uh, there is no fear of expiring. Okay. Uh, those vaccines have got a long life, up to a year. So only by the end of this year can we worry about expiry yeah. in as far as Johnson & Johnson. But we still need people to come forward because we don't know when is the next wave and how is it going to be, what will be the variant. And we have seen even with this one that the vaccines have made very good protection for those who are vaccinated, protection against serious illness. We were quite quick in predicting the, the fourth wave and, you know, it came a little earlier than we thought. I know you speak about a next wave. Is there a fear that, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen the end of it? I mean, have you got predictions for 2022? We, we, we haven't heard from our modelers as yet. We will be meeting with them. But just talking to some of the scientists uh, from time to time, the expectation is that, uh, you know, um, if, if, if nothing else changes, uh, if there is no uh, very, you know, a variant which is uh, problematic, um, a variant of, of serious concern very soon, we definitely would expect a wave 
somewhere around May when the winter starts. Mm. That's uh, when people start to congregate in, in, indoors because of uh, cold weather. So around that time when the flu season also starts, we expect that are, uh, possibly middle to the end of May going into winter. Yeah. That's when we're likely to get the next wave. It might come earlier, just yeah. like we saw in, in, the last, in, in the last year. Quick questions. Minister, I'm going to fire questions at you because I think I've literally got a minute left, um, or, or even if that. When will children below the age of 12 um, be vaccinated in South Africa? That we, 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 we depend on our uh, scientists. Um, uh, our, we've got a, a ministerial advisory committee on vaccination. They, they look at information available and they advise the manufacturers if they are, they are convinced that uh, in terms of the science, and also the safety of the vaccines, as we they learn from other countries, uh, that it is safe and it's necessary. Okay. So they will give the necessary advice. Nothing in the pipeline as yet, so we're still waiting not, on not, advice. Minister, yeah, very quickly. At this stage, no. Very quickly, um, the, 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 the national state of disaster, is it really still necessary? I mean, we're approaching day 666 of the lockdown tomorrow. It's not a, not a very nice number, triple six, but is it necessary? What is necessary is some uh, control of uh, especially basic protection uh, uh, in terms of public health. Wearing of masks uh, being uh, necessary, uh, uh, avoiding crowds, uh, big numbers of meetings and so on. So those are the kind of controls still required. So we're looking at how else we can be able to still help the country in terms of avoiding these risks without using the disaster. So. Uh, uh, our department and, and justice department are working hard behind the scenes to try and find other ways to help uh, assist the country in terms of avoiding okay. these risks without right. using the Disaster Management Act. Minister, a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very, very much for joining us. That was our health minister, Dr. Joe Parkler, giving us a big update and also talking to this vaccination warehouse that was opened yesterday or launched yesterday. Uh, quick.